From the Thai Cats Audio Network, this is Task and Twos. Thai Cat fans, welcome to the Task and Twos show. Every week, our update with myself, Luke Tasker, and Andy Fan Twos. Twos, how you doing, man? You're back from Saskatchewan. I am, yeah. I had a great trip out there, and I even made it back in time to catch the uh, the Thanksgiving game here in Hamilton. So I got to take in two games this week. It was great. So tell me about it out there. The uh, Twos is on the Plaza of Honor now, uh, forever etched in stone in Saskatchewan. Um, what was it like? Pretty good, uh, pretty good uh, week of events and stuff. Yeah, it certainly was. You know, uh, it's been a while since I'd been back out there, and um, they did a great job of of the gala induction ceremony, and then gave given us my Amanda and I, my wife and I, a tour of the stadium. Um, nice. And that place is is crazy. It's it's out of this world, and uh, and yeah, and then we got to see some old friends. Got some time off to just just chill, visit visit some of the restaurants and that we used to frequent, and some of the hot spots. And uh, and then there was a breakfast the morning of the game, just with some alumni and other people in the Plaza of Honor, and then the game time, the game itself, and um, we were up in a box and. Uh, you know, just got to take in the game and see a lot of fans, take a lot of pictures and sign autographs. And then at halftime, we got, we got to go on, on stage and sort of speak to the fans. So it was, uh, it was really nice because it had been a long time. And, um, like it was 10 years ago now for me that, that I was playing there and, uh, sort of went into the off season, not, not no like not knowing whether I'd be back or not, and then just didn't go back. So uh, other than in a tie cat Jersey. So it was, <laughs> so it was nice to kind of go back and uh, as a, you know, as a rider and, and, uh, and kind of get some closure, I guess, in a, in a sense, but they, they did a really great job. And, um, and it was nice to see some old friends and, and some of the relationships that I was able to share all those great years with while I was out there. That's cool, man. The uh, are you a uh, are you a golf guy in uh, in Saskatchewan? Is that one of your your restaurants of choice? Uh, it, it was on my radar, honestly. Yeah, I I've been there more than a handful of times, and I was yeah. expecting to go there, but I had my my old colleague. Um, well, he, listeners would know speaking with the enemy, Luke Mullinder. Uh, he he was he was my my close friend and. So I let him pick it, and and we went to a place called Memories, which was uh, for for like a, a nice sit down dinner, and that was our that was our only sit down dinner night. Nice. And yeah, it was funny because the the owner and and a couple of the wait waiters or, and the wait staff like recognized Amanda and I, and they were telling us when we went there, you know, fourteen years <laughs> ago, and they were like, "This is where you sat. This is it." And it was like. <laughs> It was wild, and yeah, and then of course, like it was the night before the game, and uh, from both teams, there were a bunch of players and coaches in there. So, yeah, um, yeah, it was it was cool to see. No, oh, that's fantastic, man. The uh, uh, unfortunately, the uh, game didn't go Sask's way, right? It looks like a field goal, field goal at the end. Uh, took it home for Calgary. Yeah, I, I don't know if I'm bad luck right now or what, but that's that's three <laughs> games in a row that have come down to a last second field goal going the going the uh, the wrong way than I was hoping for, you know. Yeah, oh, it's wild, man. How how about your speech? What uh, how how long did you did you make it go? They were we were on a strict guideline, and there was a reason for it that I didn't find out till after. But mm-hmm. there was like months leading up, they keep asking me, "Where's your speech? Give me your speech." And I'm thinking. I don't want to give you my speech. Like I want to, <laughs> I want to surprise you just like everyone else. Right. Yeah. And they're like, okay, 600 words. We want it to be four or five minutes. And it's like, mm-hmm. okay, fine. No worries. Yeah. But they kept telling me there's this timeline. And, and it turns out that one of my t- call, one of my teammates I played with my first, first two years, Scott Schultz, he was uh, a defensive lineman. He got inducted into the Plaza. Uh, I, th- I think like seven years ago now, but he went for an hour and 15 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> he was, oh, he was talking for an hour and 15 minutes. So they're like, no, you got to do 15 minutes. <laughs> I mean, you got to do four or five minutes. So yeah. 
So, uh, yeah, I did. And, and it, it was good because I did have it written down or like I did have some highlights to go on and or some point forms. I mean, some bullets and, yeah. um, yeah, I mean, Amanda's heard me do many speeches before some of them, I wing it, some of them, I prepare <laughs> some of them, yeah. something in between. And she thought it was, she thought it was really, really nice. So, and so yeah. did, so did many people. <laughs> well, that's that's the real uh the real bar just so long as the so long as the missus thinks you, you did a good job the uh so what it was, was it four other players you were one of five to go on the plaza uh this year there was three players and one builder oh, so nice, myself and and chris gets laugh are, are people would are names you'd probably recognize um mm-hmm. so i played with chris yeah that's cool for he came in 07 but he he started playing in 08 and then we played together 08 9 10 and then my my couple games in eleven as well, and then he he continued playing in Sask until sixteen was his last year yeah. in Sask, and then he played one year in Edmonton. So he was part of the Canadian Air Force with me uh, out there. <laughs> nice, yeah. And uh, and yeah, we became we became pretty good friends. So it was really cool to go in with him and and you know hang out with him and his his wife and family for the weekend. Yeah. And then Paul Hill, who was a tremendous uh, builder out there, a supporter. He he's uh, he owns a bunch bunch of different companies and have fundraised and supported the riders for many years. And some of the dark days um, helped meet payroll, and uh, I think is a big reason why the team got through the you know the pandemic. To be honest, mm-hmm. um, from his own contribution and and people he's connected with him fundraising yeah. so he was in as a builder and then gabe patterson who was the first black star for the riders he came he was playing in 46 and 47 and he was only the there was only i think one one black guy before him on the team early mm-hmm. 30s and then at the time they were the regina riders and he uh he was a superstar in the league only for a couple of years but even after that there it was another it was years, years and years before, um, you know, he really paved the way mm-hmm. for, for both, both black people and, and also just anyone from like the, from the U S really to, uh, to make a name for themselves at, at our game, at the Ticat game, I was, I was chatting with, uh, with Matt Dunnigan when he was coming in to do his, uh, his color. And yeah, he was, he said the same thing. He's, uh, he said he, he was he knew the name and he said, Yeah, well it's like guys like him that really really paved the ways for guys like me to come down here and or mm-hmm. to come up here and, and play. So um so that was cool. They did a nice video and, and a guy named Wes Cates, who was another teammate of mine and fellow previous Plaza inductee, he's mm-hmm. he re, he received the off the uh he received the honor for Gabe because Gabe yeah, cool. is Gabe is, is a humorous uh he, he was he died in like the 70s i think he was born in 1919 mm-hmm. wow that's cool man what a cool weekend it's a, it really is a special football city honestly and so and of course so is hamilton and everyone compares the the two east and west but my first uh my first saskatchewan indoctrination was the gray cup in 13 when i had i had been in canada for like 6 weeks total and we went out there and played a negative – I think our first day of practice was negative 27 degrees. And honestly, I can't even remember if it was Celsius or Fahrenheit, but it doesn't matter. It was pretty <laughs> pretty cold. And uh, guys missed practice day two because they had frostbite from day one. And I remember myself, Bakari Grant, maybe Brian Brom, I believe, were sitting in golfs the night before the Grey Cup. And that was like our pre pre uh, night before dinner and fans were coming through with like a marching band of fans walked through the restaurant playing rest, playing their instruments, like, like walking around the tables. The waiters didn't care that it was, it was a circus, man. And then we got our, yeah, our heads kicked in the next day. <laughs> uh, that was a, that was my first task experience. And the place is really a special CFL town. That's cool. The new stadium. I think I played two of my, I think my last two seasons I got to play there pretty pretty top notch facilities i mean it's a it's a pretty incredible uh uh stadium for the cfl i did not get a chance to win a game there uh but uh special that your name is uh, etched there forever that's very cool man 
Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, yeah, I remember that 2013 Grey Cup. Oh, boy. It, yeah, it got up. Boy. Some of those weeks, some of those practice days were, were in the 30s, minus 30s. Uh, yeah. And, uh, yeah, I do remember the frostbite story. And poor guys, they couldn't play in the game <laughs> because they got frostbite. Mark Dial, and there was one other Mark guy. Dial. That's and, right. Uh, oh, I can't remember. I no, can't remember. The top of my hand. I know it was two or three Was it guys Sam Scott? Guys. Yeah, it sounds right. And then the, Sam the, Scott. day three or day two, we had we drove up to Moose Jaw to play in that indoor facility just so we could like run some offense in there. Uh, all for not, man. That that game got out of hand pretty quickly. Yeah, um, you know what? It's one of those games, though. It's sort of like um, we were talking about this earlier in the season, and there's just some of those games that you get a couple bounces going the one a certain way all in the first quarter, and then things just snowball and. Yeah. That's how I honestly felt about that Grey Cup game. I didn't it, in the second half we got dominated, but it was sort of we were already deflated by yeah. then. And if yep. if the first quarter went a little bit differently, like that one time Darian Durant fumbled the ball, we had like two chances to get <laughs> it, and then all of a sudden Corey Sheets picked it up for like a thirty yard gain. It's like, yeah. like just plays like that. If they go the other way, then then who knows? You know, if you're going into halftime and it's a it's a three point game either way then the game is totally going to be totally different in the second half. So anyway, I, I don't take away anything away from them that year. They, that was their year uh, and they did dominate us, but yeah. it was, uh, it was one of those games that I think just kind of got away from us. Yeah. It went away early. We on. had a it good was, team. Yeah. It was tough. Well, Craig Butler got his, uh, got his great cup uh, ring that year. <laughs> um, yeah. Well, to bring it back uh, over into Hamilton here, uh, that was a that was a heartbreaker, man. I know you, I, I've 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 found this year uh, as you and I have both got experience in the booth with color. I, I find that you just it's almost the best perspective I've ever had of a football game when you're doing the color commentary. You're watching it so intently. You have such a bird's eye view of the field. Uh, you really get a sense for the ebbs and flows of a game. What was your take on the Ty Cats on the Thanksgiving on the Thanksgiving Day game? Well, they certainly looked impressive in the first half, um, especially on the defensive side. And yeah. then they go into half. Uh, like, really, the defensive line was the story of the first half for both for both sides because mm-hmm. I thought the Ticats were able to run the ball pretty effectively and, and protect on the first half. But the, the key plays in the game for the Toronto defense were, were the pass deflections at the line of scrimmage. So they were there were they had three in the first half that were in key crucial moments that just not just stuffed up drives, just ended drives and right at the edge of field goal range. Uh, and then they, we tried to fake punt at the one of them. Um, and, and so that was the story for the Toronto side. And then the, the Hamilton side, like <laughs> they were just dominating, like all over the place. So Garrett Davis and company, yeah. um, they were just monsters out there so and then they go in the second half and i gotta say like the offensive production for the tie cats was by far the best i've seen so far this season we saw a glimpse of it uh you know in when we went to montreal and when dane evans and uh and stephen dunbar jr in the first quarter like they had they had a pretty good offense but it was it really lasted a quarter and then promising to me the problem was on the defensive side of the ball it, which is strange just to say this year, 2021 tie cats is they just couldn't quite figure it out because if they went to go into a zone coverage, Bethel Thompson sort of, I don't know if he knew already or he was reading it very quickly and he was going to the right place with just the, the first level read mm-hmm. or, or second level read just almost inst- instantaneously. So they're playing cover three to the field. He's running two hitches on one guy and just picking the right guy that's wide open and, and, and that. And then if they went man to man, then they were able to sort of leak somebody out of the backfield and they were, they were getting matchups on, on the linebackers on uh, like the running DJ Foster on Santos Knox, for instance, and they just weren't able to match up. Uh, so yeah, it seemed like they had a, a great play call for, for whatever the tie cats were doing defensively. And, uh, and then the pressure, the pressure just wasn't the same as it was in the first half from the defensive line. So they just, 
Bethel Thompson and company just picked uh, picked the cats apart. It was like a, a slow bleed, but just constant. It was just completion after completion after completion. And, you know, it, it was tough to see, but because even the Tech Cats played pretty well in the second half offensively. And uh, it was just a great game. It really came down to a few plays that thought, you know, you, you would have thought that you won the game just like in the Montreal game, but Toronto made it happen on third, third down. They just made some cr- crucial catches. Uh, yeah. I know I'm blabbering on here, but there was, it was also a great game for catching too. Um, yeah. Both, both teams. Was there some, was some great ones. Yeah. It was, and we hadn't, we haven't seen a ton of that so far this year. So overall yeah, the, it was still my favorite game to watch. Although it just the, the ending was, was disappointing. I agree. It was exciting. I mean, Mazzoli threw for 300 for the first time since, uh, you know, 2019 before his, uh, before his injury of, I mean, which seems like a lifetime ago, but they had that production there. There was a moment in the fourth quarter where Bethel Thompson was 19 of 21. I mean, so what you're, you're right on the money there. Like there was just a slow bleed a little bit. He was just, he was just taking what he could get for six, for eight yards, no matter, no matter what, no matter how small of a gain it was, he was taking what he could get in the passing game. Mm -hmm. There was that moment the game was about to tip over into Hamilton to Hamilton's favor. It was about to, it was about to, to sort of the momentum was going to get out of control for a second there when I think it was Cameron Kelly had an unbelievable interception. I mean, a catch that you or I would have, would have been stoked to make. I mean, it was beautiful and he secured it very cleanly too. You know, that's such a, that he looked like a receiver because that's a real talent to dive and catch the ball, but then to clearly, trap it with your body not on the ground right to pin it with your to your chest with your hands instead of using it to sort of brace your 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 dive really beautiful but that got called back with the roughing the passer and Toronto turned that into points and all of a sudden the thing looked a little bit different where it was about to just really it was about to break open in Hamilton's favor I it was one of those games where I was like I, I couldn't believe what I was watching in the, in the in the last plays of the game, I really felt like Hamilton, like finally you and I have talked all year. We want to see passing production. I want to see tie cat receivers making catches and they had some big strikes. Jalen Ackland caught a big touchdown again. It was great seeing Braylon Addison get back in the mix and be a part of the productivity and going forward. Very excited to see more of that. But I, I, I said this in the coach Osho this week. I wonder what you think about this, that game. I, make it a little bit equivalent to the 2014 Grey Cup in Vancouver. Like, it's like all I needed was – all we needed was one more drive. Like, just put – like, just add five minutes onto the clock and I promise we'll win. Like, you know, I, I it was like I, – I couldn't believe that after all of that productivity and uh, the just back and forth it ended up in uh, Toronto's favor. And I don't, I don't think they were in the lead until – double zeros on the clock right i mean it's just a, a heartbreaking loss in the third time the ticats have lost by thir- three or less this season i mean it's really uh really interesting how this has progressed but a lot of uh a <laughs> lot of play left uh in the east here ticats get a chance to play uh the two uh last place teams in the league uh, over the next two weeks that's an interesting uh, uh, point for them uh, if they could if they could turn that in two and zero over the next two weeks and chase down a little bit of Toronto who has I believe it's BC and Montreal for two weeks you know I don't know there's a lot a lot of things are still going to shake down but boy it's a it's a heartbreaker and a tough way to go on a bye week for the guys after that loss yeah you said it and uh, we were talking to to Acklin after the game and he said. Um, you know, he said we're finding ways to lose right now. We got to find ways to win. And um, I don't know if I'd be so hard on yourself. Like you got to take some positives from this game. And and the beauty is, like, is yeah. Don't get me wrong. It's super disappointing two weeks in a row to feel like you're in control of the game and 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 come out on the wrong end. But the um, the good thing is, is you still control your destiny and. Uh, to yeah. to at least guarantee yourself a home playoff game because Toronto is up by two games in the standings, but you play them one more time. And Montreal has the same amount of wins, but they do have a game in hand, but they play Toronto. So one of those teams has to win. And 
and you have like the tie cats if they beat Toronto will have the tiebreaker against both teams so my point is is that even if Toronto wins every game and tie cats win every game you got second place if Toronto loses to Montreal and tie cats win every game you get first place or unless Montreal wins every game or no you still have first place no 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 sorry Montreal <laughs> will get first and tie- you get what I'm saying though you'll have you'll have second oh, place in Toronto available. Toronto will be third yeah yeah. So um, basically, it's you control your destiny, and that's where you want to be. That's the position you want to be in going down the final stretch after your last bye week. So, you know, exactly. you're in a position that you played – well, offensively, you played your best game. Defensively, you, you, you finally learned a few lessons. Like, you talk about complementary football, and you said 19 for 21 at one point. Well, it's a lot different when the, when the defensive line rushed – 15 to 20 times total in the first half and they're already rushed 20 something times with not getting to the quarterback in a quarter yeah. or a quarter and a bit yeah you know you get tired you get frustrated uh so it it all kind of goes together and 100 percent. yeah well, so you're right there's a lot uh there's a lot uh still to be determined in the tie cats i remember years where where we were like you know you you start looking at the puzzle that has to piece together especially 2017 when we started out 0 and 8 we but we were still we still had a chance very late into the season but like we had to not only win every game we needed like specific teams to lose a game each week going in and it's like okay (laughs) and I think we I think the last three games of the season's season we had already been uh excluded from the playoffs when I believe it was uh Ottawa beat Sask actually uh that that ended it for us, but I love 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 the end of the CFL season where the where this sort of puzzle starts getting pieced together and you start fighting and the games start start really uh, you know just becoming more and more important. I feel like I feel like you and I had some of our best uh, some of our best football is in this October uh, October stretch here. So exciting stuff. It is certainly is. The weather's been great too. So yeah, no no excuses. You know, not even one letter. So twos, I don't. I don't know if you saw earlier today, they just made the announcement that, uh, as we all know, the, Ham- the Hamilton is hosting the Great Cup this year, but they have made it clear that it's going to be a little bit abbreviated, uh, s- some sort of a little bit lesser for the Great Cup festivities. All the uh, celebrations are going to be uh, sort of played down a little bit, obviously still due to COVID. They're going to keep the stadium at 24,000, they said, instead of build on the Great Cup extension that they've done to stadiums in the past. But Hamilton gets their Grey Cup this year. They also announced today that Hamilton gets the Grey Cup again in 2023. So I'm thinking, you and I retired too early, man. <laughs> like, what is this? I can't believe that. So we played all these years and had to go west for all of our Grey Cups. And now there's two in three years, there are going to be two Grey Cups. Ups in Hamilton. I mean, it is amazing. What a great, uh, what a great uh, announcement for uh, for Ticat fans. It certainly is. It's uh, it's been a long time since the cup was here, and and then having having a modified Grey Cup this year, you know that there's not going to be a lot of people able to travel from across the country. Uh, yeah. I I think they did the right thing and and give you know give it give it back here in two years to. Give the chance, give the Hamilton Tiger Town Nation and and, a, and the city of Hamilton a yeah. chance to really, uh, really show what they have to offer and 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 um, and have that festivity. So, uh, yeah, we certainly did. It's going to be Hamilton, Sask, Hamilton, and uh, I don't know. Maybe I'm going to go. I'm going to go train right now and see if I can get back out there. <laughs> oh, I can't believe it. I would have. I would have done anything for a home uh, home uh, Grey Cup. That sounds uh, amazing. The uh, yeah, very cool. I mean, I, I don't know if they – I don't know if it's been totally announced that they're going to do an extension to the stadium if for 23. I would kind of expect it to be, but very excited for this year and uh, and uh, for that time as well. It's just uh, – I mean, wasn't it like 1996 or something like that? At Ivor Wynn was the last time they had the Grey Cup? Something like that, I think. It's hard to imagine that with the nine team, eight or nine-team league, depending on the year, like that it would, it would take that yeah. long. It's it's wild, um, well, but Buffalo yeah, you're right. Never, Buffalo never gets Super Bowls either, so <laughs> <laughs> no, of course that's because it's cold in Buffalo. But everywhere is cold. Uh, we're in the CFL, so you know that's not an excuse. The uh, well, that's exciting stuff, man. We'll 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 deal with that as uh, time comes along. But uh, 
anyways, good show too. It's great talking with you. And we'll, uh, we have a little bit of a stretch here to the next game. Ticats have their final bye week of the season, but uh, Ticat fans, you can join us uh, weekly for the Task and Twos update. Andy, have a great week, man. I'll talk to you soon. All right, Tash. Take care, buddy. Task and Twos. Like and subscribe to Hang With Them Weekly.